First, I'd like to start with the, the remark in 1942, which uh, Mao Zedong declared that art and literature should serve the people, that is, be readily comprehensible and morally salutary. Well, later he was in power, he made artists part of the great propaganda machine for Chinese socialism and his own ideology. This is the remark he made during the art and le uh, in, uh, lecture uh, talks at the Yan'an. Yan Yan is the headquarter of the Chinese re revolutionary um, uh, movement. Here are some examples of the uh, propaganda work, uh, uh, forms from oil painting to uh, posters, and uh, some um, printmaking prints, uh, woodblock prints, in various styles, but all in representational realistic style, because at that time, uh, chi Chinese art basically adopted from Soviet Russian model, which is representational. Uh, here are some posters from Soviet Union on the left, and the, the one from right is the Chinese posters. And uh, oil painting from left, from Russian, and the right from China. Because Mao believed that artists should spend considerable time making, um, directly working with peasants, laborers, and soldiers. This would make the artists more humane and the people more um, cultivated. Um, you can see some uh, public art in sculpture form, also realistic Soviet style. The one on the left is a, a, a Russian um, leader. The one on the right is Chairman Mao statues, and uh, also in monuments. Some 30 years later, with the closing of the most uh, art academies during anti-intellectual movement of the Cultural Revolution, many artists were sent to do labor work in the countryside, while others were assigned to create propaganda paintings, big uh, character posters, or news letter illustration. Um, at that time, even though um, Chinese uh, content and art stay the same, all realistic Soviet style. But many artists during that time um, actually happy to adopt this um, prescribed, prescribed realistic imagery because it reflects the experience of China they have been through, especially before the war or after the victory of uh, Mao's um, involvement. And they like to share that experience, especially in their art. But when the art academies reopened in the late 70s after the Cultural Revolution ended, the choice facing student painters were again between Chinese ink style and Soviet style oil painting on canvas representation. Both were well taught, even though uh, until today many mid Korea Chinese artists have this perfect technique and craftsmanship. I'm going to show you this image. It's after um, the Cultural Revolution and Mao's death in 1978. There was a hunger for artist, artistic and political openness and freedom. Um, there's a new art group called The Stars was formed in Beijing. Um, they uh, hung their work outdoors on the fence of the National Art Museum in Beijing and organized um, uh, conversations and posters, free speech on the democracy war. 
and also published uh, a magazine called Today. This group of intellectuals were basically artists, poets, and writers. Um, they uh, actually organized the show and later on was surprisingly approved by the government. And uh, later on, they uh, uh, grant them a, a second show the following year. This is one of the artists uh, in the star group called Wang Keping. Um, here are examples of his work. He was a former Red Guard and self-taught artist who came to believe that more um, real uh, emotion and formed experimental art could speak to the people more effectively than social realism. And this is his wood um, sculpture. He combines the humorous figure of um, a, a rounded Buddha face with mouse image. Then he later on um, left China and moved to France. Another example in the star group, um, <laughs> Uh, Ai Weiwei, maybe some of the you already know his work. Um, he's an artist, um, architect, designer, and social commentator, also blogger, whose work ca carries an iconic and political charge. He is the son of the famous poet Ai Qing, who was sent into um, exile during the late 50s um, anti-racist um, uh, campaign. I uh, returned with his family from the remote Xinjiang area and to his hometown Beijing in 1978. After a few terms at the film academy in Beijing, he dropped out and joined the star group. And in 1981, I went to New York uh, studied at Parsons School of Design and made some conceptual work, but not anything um, controversial or provocative or got uh, any international attention until later he moved back to China in 1993. Uh, I can show you some of his latest work in the next few slides. Um, after the um, star group uh, formed, um, there's a, a number of artists uh, also hunger for self-expression. Um, this is a group of artists who made work that's very different from uh, Mao's propaganda realistic imageries. Um, instead of painting a big, tall, full, rounded face, they are more interested in uh, personal or uh, individual or uh, real people in everyday life. So uh, this group called uh, Scar Art. From left, um, uh, a painter painted a couple, a family with a baby from Tibetan areas. The one um, depicts a, a worker in the factory after, during the, uh, the break, and the one on the right is the uh, farm daughter in the remote, uh, more countryside scenery with animals. Uh, this is another great example of a giant po uh, portrait of a um, uh, peasant. Uh, the artist called a father in, in, in this oil painting is seven feet by five feet. Usually this is a large scale portrait like you usually see in the, during the Cultural Revolution to depict Tiananmen Mao. So you can compare the two um, paintings. One on the left is a real dark skinned, um, you know, wrinkled photo, almost photorealistic um, painting of uh, a real peasant. Just um, sweat on his skin and also the contrast between darker face and the white uh, head wrap and shirt and towards to the bowl that he's going to drink and, uh, and staring at uh, the viewers. In the real life, you see this type of peasants uh, during the hardship working uh, environment. Then you can see Qianmen Mao on the right is uh, 
to show the inner, almost emotional, emotionless um, facial impression of fakeness rather than a real depict of uh, everyday people. Um, after the scar art uh, movement in late 70s, the depiction of common faces and ordinary people were replaced by Chairman Mao's image. Uh, scar art reflect the illness of the Cultural Revolution on everyday people. It also brought a new photorealism, uh, replaced a social realism and sensitivity to the retreat of the artwork. So the sadness, despair, and even anger were displayed to replace the fake in internal smiling mask that Chairman Mao always carried. So this is um, another uh, great example of how Western art started uh, flash into Chinese uh, art community after Deng's open door policy in early 80s and um, Robert Rauschenberg was the first uh, American artist who had a solo show travel to Ch China National Art Museum in Beijing and made a big uh, impact in Chinese art world because nobody has seen such material, especially ready-made, everyday used, found objects and a collage and assemblage, a mixed medium of using printmaking, oil painting, all combined together um, compared to the medium, traditional medium they use like uh, uh, ink paintings and uh, bronze, jade, uh, and also wood. So this actually gave a Chinese artist an inspiration to uh, form an installation art later but they see that they, it opens up many opportunities for Chinese artists to learn from the Western uh, artists because, because before that, Chinese artists didn't have an opportunity to see real work in, in person, like in the museum setting. They only studied the Western uh, masters from textbook. So this is a real opportunity for them to see artwork uh, in that closer, um, uh, physical experience, to see the textures, to see how the artwork made. So after that, um, there was a, a first nudity exhibition opened at the China National Museum and made another splash in Chinese, uh, not for the Chinese art community, but also for ordinary people because the nudity was considered as a forbidden or taboo uh, motive or subject. And because the artists depict the model is so real, <laughs> some of the uh, audience want to see the show, they even can recognize the, the models from their neighborhood. Because being a life model in China, especially for female model, was still like a, a hidden profession. Nobody wanted to share what they do. But once somebody see it, they feel like they have lost their face or any, they don't gain any social status. So after this show was opened in Beijing, I made um, a lot of controversial be uh, uh, conversation because some of the work have to take it down, um, being enforced by the uh, models. And uh, you can see, you rarely see uh, a show after the first day of opening the long line <laughs> in Beijing is like surrounded with three, four blocks um, because the people have this curiosity. They could never see any nudity pictures in Chinese medium during that time. Uh, and you can see it's so real. The, because the, um, Chinese artists was all studied and trained in Soviet style, basically um, they follow you know, they put the setup, tabletop setup of like a still life models, still life object, geometrical shaped objects, study from there and also do um, a plast 
casting models and figures from Western uh, sculptures and eventually studied figurative uh, from life model. So this is a training. Some uh, mid-career artists today in China still have this uh, incredible craftsmanship. And later on, um, in the early 80s, because there's the openness to the West, not in economic development, but also see an artistic uh, introduction to Chinese uh, audience and Chinese art communities. There's a Western uh, art styles uh, has been introduced or adopted in their own art. So you can see clearly from the left, um, the artists influenced by the um, sur surrealism from the West and also from a Renaissance uh, art. And there's a number of uh, governmental censored organized a national oil painting exhibition held every year in the um, national art museums. But the motif and the content of art will still remain the same. It's always, it's not propaganda work, but more uh, self-expression, but still um, government uh, approved uh, subject. Uh, you can still see, you know, landscape, figurative work, birds and flowers, those traditional type of subjects. Uh, but this show after 1989 opened just before Tiananmen Square was the first Chinese China avant-garde show um, have uh, curated um, by a Chinese uh, curator ca called uh, Gao Minglu. And this e exhibition showed 293 works by 186 artists. And medium has a different variety and a diversity in terms of installation, performance art, and oil painting sculpture. And the great example about this show is after the show, at the beginning, uh, opening of the show, the woman artist called Xiao Lu on the right, she opened a, 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 a fire, a pixel, uh, shoots in her own work is a mural to reflect his uh, symbolic um, suicidal attempt in her work. So after the government, uh, uh, saw this uh, incident because uh, uh, carrying a gun and fire in China was not allowed. So she was arrested <coughs> with her boyfriend. Uh, the, the, the pair together did this whole event and as a part of performance uh, to her piece because of her own family connections. Uh, after three days in jail, she was uh, sent to Australia to study, so left China. And this show, after that, reopened, was shut down after that incident and reopened for three days. Then somebody clear, declared they found another explosion in the exhibition gallery. I don't know for real or, <laughs> or fake, but later on they shut down the show again. So this show was planned to have a three month period, but at the end, it only showed for 10 days. Um, this show really is the wake up call um, or a coincident happening uh, after four months that show opened and the June 4 Tiananmen Square incident happened. This is the, um, the massive crowd in Tiananmen Square. When I was a student there, I, I was there to pass it participate the whole um, event. And the sculpture on the right, uh, on the left, called uh, the Goddess of the Liberty, was built by our school, Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, a sculpture department. The students and faculty spent less than three days uh, put up this um, uh, giant uh, statue. And then we all marched to the square and delivered this um, uh, sculpture. And nobody can forget that the brief uh, man on the left standing still in front of the tank. And uh, 
because during that time, the main transportation uh, were buses and bicycles. A um, lot of students got shot or civilian was uh, um, gone down because of the bicycles. And they don't live in the center of the Beijing because the Tiananmen Square took place in the center of the Beijing. And all the students live in the third ring road, which is the suburb of Beijing. W the way they can get to the center, it either take a buses or, or took uh, bicycles. And uh, there was a martial law. Now everybody remember the killing or, or, or before that the protest or hunger uh, strike, but nobody really remembered after um, the incident. Um, when I was there as a, a student, I lived in the boarding school, so um, there was a martial law after the incident. No uh, people uh, allowed to go to the street, and everywhere everything was shut down. So me and my twin sister live in the dorm, and there was no <laughs> cook came to school to cook for us. So we have to sneak out, open the front door of the, the, the school, and there was a convenience store nearby um, run by a local uh, people. So we, buy, uh, we bought some noodle, instant noodle, came home to, um, to, to eat at the school. And uh, I still remember vividly uh, how the killing was happened because the night before the killing and uh, the students leader called all the universities saying that we have to go to the square uh, in order to protect um, what we have did to against the government or, or against corruption because the leader from the Russian um, gonna uh, visit Chinese leader. They have to go through, they have to walk through the Tiananmen Square, but the Tiananmen Square was blocked by the students. So there's a conflict between students and the leaders. The students want the leader to give more um, uh, promises, and the government wouldn't want to do it. But the Russian leader have to came to visit Beijing. So how are they going to do? So um, at the end, the government found a way uh, when they picked up uh, Gorbachev from the airport, they make a run that didn't go through the Tiananmen Square because it's all messy and very dirty, smell, bad smell, and all the tents put it up by the students. So they couldn't go through. They made a secret path. But, uh, but they also have an idea to get rid of the students, let, let them leave the, the square. But nobody knows what's going to happen. And the night before uh, Gorbachev came, all the students gathered at the, at the square. Then there's a big loudspeaker started calling, said, we want you all to evacuate everybody on the square by 10 um, minutes. We started counting down from the number from bigger to smaller. Then nobody leave after the main night announcement. Till later on, when we heard the number calling, we started to panic because we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody can. The square is so crowded. If you are not in the center, we were on the side, the round on the edge. You didn't know what's going on in the middle, in the center. Then we heard the number started calling. Then all of a sudden, everybody started running because you saw a giant wave of people running towards you because in the center of the people started running then coming towards you, you didn't know what go, going to happen. You have to run, otherwise you're going to be stabbed <laughs> or walked down um, by the crowd. So we started running. All of a sudden, we heard a number started calling from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, till 0. We heard a gunshot. Then everybody didn't believe it. Some of them started running. I remember when I was running with my sister, all of a sudden, I saw the people behind me uh, fell on the floor. Then I turned this way and saw more people behind me sh sh got shot. Then some people don't believe it. They ran back because they remember they left their bicycles <laughs> parked in the square. So 
Many people, especially in, in, uh, innocent students, got killed because of that reason. And after that, uh, the government, uh, because the media was all controlled, uh, the outside people, nobody know what's going on in Beijing. So um, because nobody come to school to cook, so the principal, the president, sent a message to us saying that because we don't know this martial law, how long the school going to reopen? and the working unit gonna reopen. Everybody, especially students who are not a Beijing uh, citizen, have to go back to your hometown to wait. Um, anything happened or called, we will let you know. So we got this message. At that time, we have to s sneak out to check if there's no tank or uh, soldiers uh, on the street. Then we sneak out to a nearby train station, took the train back home. When we got home, all our principals, teachers told us, when you go to see your parents, don't tell them what happened. Because if you told them, they're going to be scared and worried, and they won't send you back. <laughs> because the government controlled the media. So when I got home, I didn't never tell my parents what happened. I just told them, oh, the school shut, shut down for a few days. We'll have to wait until they call back. So later on, we moved back. Uh, to Beijing, uh, took a train, was free because they gave all free food and free tickets to students. Came back to the city and everything reopened. But the first few days, we saw all the holes on the wall, especially near the Tiananmen Square, the tall buildings uh, with the bullet holes. They all have the this, 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 this soldiers, army soldiers to cover the holes to get rid of the evidence. And a few days before school started, it was um, very uh, difficult for some of the students and faculty because uh, during the uh, Tiananmen Square, they were very actively involved. Then they started asking students and faculty to report who were, who were at the Tiananmen Square. You have to give out a list, otherwise you will have a, a very hard uh, consequences. Then a few um, classmates that I know and a uh, number of faculties um, was uh, they were arrested by the government and sent to jail. And after a month or a few months later, they released them. And since then, the Tiananmen Square uh, incident, all college students, freshman students, the first three months or at least the first month. When they started college, they all have to attend the military training. It's a Chinese government way to say, we want to build a friendship between soldiers and students. Because the Tiananmen Square really um, hurt. The, 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 the victims are, were students and the soldiers. They were all being used by the government for their own political reasons. So this, i just like to share that experience with you. Um, so after the Tiananmen Square, a lot of uh, intellectuals feel there's a hopeless or feel, feel like the government have uh, um, uh, problems. So they either left uh, China um, to go overseas to study or work, or some of them remain um, in China, but to do very subtle, um, not direct, indirect political uh, work, only share with each other or share among um, them who uh, have the same interest or have same hope for uh, self-expression or artistic or political agenda. So here are the example of the work. Um, after or same time during the Tiananmen Square, but overshadowed by the incident, uh, there's more abstract painting going on at the, around that time too. And uh, these artists' work uh, during the 1985 called the New Wave is their uh, self-expression to create work that is uh, called uh, cynical pop art a cynical, realistic work. Uh, is a self-irony or more like a 
uh, a troublemaker or school dropout figure who against the iconic um, Chairman Mao's portrait. Big smile face, a, a self irony to smile at the, um, the government or uh, uh, combined with Western uh, pop art like Coca Cola uh, logos in the back with the uh, Chinese Communist uh, Party red guards red, uh, holding uh, Chairman Mao's little red book. This artist also made a portrait of uh, ghost-like uh, faces that almost uh, no emotions to memorize how ch cultural ex uh, revolution um, made people, gave people's um, physical and psychological impact. Uh, I, I said before, some of the artists remained in, in China after Tiananmen Square incident, and some of them had the opportunity to show their work overseas or uh, studied and worked and got invited to do residency in the US. This is a, a great example of uh, Xu Bing, who was um, uh, 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 trained in uh, calligraphy uh, and printmaking mediums, and then uh, later on, just before she, he came to the U.S., he made this book, uh, uh, giant installation based on printmaking mediums, and then show it uh, in the National Museum in China. And then the next year, he came to U.S. Uh, to do his more um, Eastern and Western transculture influenced art installation piece. And there's another example of the artist who used mask to cover up uh, the face, uh, representing or symbolic the irony of uh, Chinese leadership. <laughs> oh, how come I, I put it wrong? Okay. This uh, Xu Bing also created. Uh, a language and the calligraphy that he invented the language with uh, uh, cannot readable means uh, to form the, the each stroke and character in English. But when you see it at the first stare, it looks like a Chinese character in the traditional classical form. But uh, no Chinese can read. But for, for, for Western audience, if they know the um, the English uh, character, they can make it up. A Chinese words, they think they, they can read. <laughs> so this helped him to win the MacArthur Genius Award. So um, I, I really like his works, very uh, intellectual, combined with Chinese Buddhism, Taoism, uh, all form of uh, uh, philosophy. This is his response to 9-11. It's also a very Taoist um, approach. He um, collected all the um, dirt and uh, um, ashes from the aftermath of 9-11. And he was invited to do a show in Spain. So he couldn't get ashes out of American custom. So he mixed the ashes with water and made it more like a clay and stuffed in a, a doll. Uh, his daughter carried the doll and put in the doll, <laughs> carried through the custom without any problem. Once he was in, an, in the actual gallery space, he um, diluted with the water so the, the ashes remain the original form in powders and uh, sparkled them on the floor and uh, also used the glue to make the, uh, a freeze. This is uh, his work uh, in Venice Biennial uh, two years ago. I was there to saw the work. So it's his response to um, Chinese uh, labors. Uh, each material is a recycled material from the migrant workers, and they 
they helped him to build the entire um, sculpture piece under his direction, but his ideas is convey the labor intense um, working environment, also Chinese environmental issues. Another uh, example of the artist who left China, went to Japan, study. Um, he was trained in Chinese theater set design, use gunpowder to uh, make work that take advantage of the sky as a picture plane and to celebrate the joy and uh, the chances happening in his work. He also used gunpowder to burn the paper and also on fabric uh, uh, surface, like the one he's wearing um, in his t-shirt. Use the traditional uh, history of Chinese long time history of gunpowder to make a piece, which is I thought is quite interesting because there's a lot of control at certain time how to ex the explosion and the way of the form of the shape of lotus flower, you have to really know the medium well. Another uh, artist from Shanghai, uh, he went to um, France, uh, make his, his name out, but he died at a younger age, only 45 years old. His work also deal with everyday objects, and his illness um, influenced his work a lot. Another artist went to Paris too, and his work also dealing current uh, Chinese environmental animal rights issue. This is his work. So you see a lot of variety and diverse form of uh, Chinese uh, con uh, co contemporary art forms here. Uh, another artist, a uh, female artist, um, I chose to show it here. Uh, she used a lot of uh, feminine material like uh, threads and uh, fabrics to make art that address her own identity being a woman uh, living in the U.S. Um, in China, there's still a uh, man-dominated art world. Um, very few female artists and few female curators um, in the art um, content. So this is my prize or respect for female artists who made their name out. <laughs> There is a need for both a Chinese and Western market, ex ex especially after 2002. And uh, there's an international interest came to China. So the both needs come from uh, two um, directions, make this great or also market-driven contemporary Chinese art. Um, after 2000, there's a number of art uh, districts opened in Beijing and Shanghai. Now become a, a touristy place, more like a, a Chelsea. And Ai Weiwei um, uh, also started, uh, funded his own nonprofit uh, gallery called Art Archives and Wa Warehouse. He also became a designer to form uh, his own design company and architecture company. He's uh, also a landlord. He rented all the <laughs> uh, uh, spaces for studios, artist studios and galleries. So he's very rich, <laughs> made his own profit, used her, his own uh, family connections, and really knows how to attract Western audience. Uh, uh, here, I, I don't want to judge his work, but he knows how to uh, promote his own art. I see him not uh, as an artist, rather uh, a social um, socialist. He also designed and built with uh, another Swiss, Swiss uh, uh, architecture team to build a bird nest uh, for 2008 Olympic 
uh, stadium. This is his response to Sichuan um, earthquake because of the poor construction of the children's school buildings uh, were collapsed after the, uh, the Sichuan uh, earthquake. And uh, many children were died, especially there were all single child uh, during that time. And the, gov the government didn't want to release how many children died. And he did an interview uh, to the parents because the, even though the government gave some uh, victim family uh, money, but was not enough um, because there's a pain and loss, they could never help. So uh, Ai Weiwei did an interview with the victim families, got all the uh, uh, correct information, and collect all the backpacks of the children who were died, and made this freeze installation. That's how he got arrested, because he released uh, the real information to Western uh, journalists. And uh, the Chinese government said, you have to find an excuse to get him arrested. And saying, because he's a landlord, he didn't pay his tax. <laughs> so he got arrested. But for me, as a Chinese living outside of China, I see him also take advantage of a Chinese government and the Western media to promote himself. Without putting him to jail, he wouldn't get his name that big. You know what I mean? So, but he's also knowing that because of his family connections, even though they can put him to jail, he wouldn't stay there as, any, as long as any other human rights activist. He knew that after three months, they will release him. So, but the Chi Chinese government have to send him to jail to send a message to all the artists or intellectuals who wanted to make a political sensitive artwork to, to tell them this is the way you have to stop. So there is a line. My, work, uh, my title called Black, um, uh, White, and Gray. So during the, uh, the Cultural Revolution, the propaganda work, artists note the fine line between black and white. But now, after the 2000s, you have more freedom to do art. Artists also have to figure out this is a gray area you cannot cross. So Ai Weiwei knows which is the gray area and how far he can cross or he have to stay. Uh, for many Chinese artists, they also know that too. So even though there's a more freedom for artistic uh, expression, but you have to still be careful if you live in China, work there as an artist, what, which fine line you cannot cross. Otherwise, you will have uh, uh, consequences or punishment. This is his work showing at uh, uh, Alcatraz in, uh, in California. And also, his uh, paper mache uh, sculpture scenery of him was arrested in prison. So that's his prison life. Uh, have two guards watch him every day. I think this work showed in New York. You have to pick from a little camera to see how he lived in, in prison. This is another example of a performance arts in China. Zhang Huan, artist name. He carried the fresh meat, uh, ran through uh, New York. And this is his way to uh, self-torture himself. Uh, there's many ways of doing performance art, use his own body to uh, uh, to raise a weakness of how government treat human uh, and animals. Um, some artists even went too extreme, uh, doing very disturbing performance. Some of the artists got arrested because they do um, public um, nudities, running naked, or, or doing any disturbing scenery, they can be arrested. And this artist doing a video piece on the right, uh, a female artist, to address the labor um, uh, criticism during in the southern China for women workers. Uh, sculpture pieces, too. A hollowed Tianmen mouse suit and uh, uh, stainless steel rocks. 
and the abstract painting, photography, photography um, adopted from traditional Chinese masters' works, but with contemporary figures and people. I use traditional rice paper medium to make a labor-intense uh, sculpture piece. Another example of using tra traditional paper folding technique to make uh, um, interesting sculpture form. Uh, ink paintings is also made uh, international uh, attention now. A female artist make ink painting on a three-dimensional form. A character, a Chinese character, red character called No, is a Chinese way to say, can you say no in China to tell the authority, I don't want to do this. So this is a self-criticism. And some artists also paint the traditional landscape on their body. And a, a calligrapher who also do a giant floor um, a piece, more like a performance. Uh, some of the work I'm going to show you, this is me and my twin sister. We went to the Central Academy of Fine Arts, started our professional training. This is the work I did when I was a student there. It's a fine style figurative ink painting. Um, I did this uh, called the Public Shower Series. It um, w was not allowed to do a, a public shower. I actually, I went to use the public shower. At that time, all the faculty and students have to share public shower. Um, uh, later on, 10 years later, in uh, early 90s, uh, people who has money to uh, can afford to have your private uh, bathroom uh, with a shower. Before that, everybody shared the bathhouse. So I sneak in, did a sketch of the bathroom, public shower, and add the figures myself. <laughs> So these are all ink and watercolor medium on rice paper. Uh, all faculty members, family members, and uh, students can use uh, three, four times a week. This become history now. No public shower exists in a bigger city, major city. And then after I came to US, I started creating this series called Three Generations. It's my first freedom that I couldn't do in China. So this series it has a lot of political and social um, symbolic meaning. Using uh, Mao as a way of self-expression, talking about uh, the suffer and joint filled by three generations from my grandmother, my mother, and a new generation of Chinese women have been through uh, a different social and political period. Uh, you see a surrealistic elements were also um, adopted in this work. Um, after I came to live in US and become more interested in observing the life differences between China and US, this is my um, work showing uh, everyday ob objects from different cultures, and they have they all share similarities, but sometimes also has a difference. Party training in different culture. China had the early party training before baby started walking, and American baby like to wear diapers until three four years old. So <laughs> even now in in some Chi Chinese big cities, you can still see baby wearing diapers during winter time. Can you imagine if all the Chinese babies wearing diapers, China now will have very big environmental problem. China will become a giant diaper dumpster. <laughs> uh, tasty in different cultures, Americans like to think uh, the, the fish stick is the delicious part, but in China, when you go to the ban banquet, they always serve uh, the guest of honor of the ha fish head. So that part considered is the delicious, nutritious um, uh, part. 
And I also did a series called Hairy Objects to address different aspects of looking at hair. You know, uh, people are so worried about looking at hair inside the food. What if hair becomes part of the food? <laughs> so this is my uh, playful way of address that uh, aspect, but in a more surreal and uh, um, humorous way. Uh, Sometimes I still do um, ink paintings. So this is my ongoing project. Sushi roll combined with um, hair and Chinese takeout and fusion cookie. They're now big, they are not big, always. Um, they are all 16 by 20 or sometimes 18 by 24. Um, because we are immigrants living in the U.S., um, the food has variety and diversity. So this is my way of introducing uh, food. I also combine with my hair theme. And the title also played uh, humorous too. Then I started questioning my asking myself as um, I, I, as a, a personal identity living in the U.S. as a female as a uh, artist and also as a mother. So this is me and my twin sister together, never separated until we came to the U.S. So our closer relationship has really become my major uh, life experience. I wanted to make a self portrait of me and her. So we both have had long hair since high school. Long hair has become our part of uh, main characteristics. So I kind of wanted to address that issues and uh, uh, make uh, something that's using traditional medium, but in a very monumental, iconic approach to use larger than life size uh, uh, scale. I also adopted the Chinese door guards, which they came as a pair usually are very brave soldiers to protect each household, to ward off the evil spirits. So just like me and my sister always came as a pair and protect each other. So I tried different scale and different perspective and composition. A long braids represents a woman's life in general from healthy black tight hair till loose enough, when you reach to the later life, it becomes a, a, a white color like a paper. So this piece is about the journey of um, a life uh, in general. Then I started doing more family portraits, looking at the different uh, reference in Western and Chinese cultures, and made this three um, graces. Uh, showed at National Portrait Gallery at Smithsonian. And this is my portrait dedicated to my daughter. She has been watching me painting old portraits of hair. She said, how come you didn't include me? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a mother-daughter natural bond. And this is my Kansas inspiration, <laughs> hair with tornado. Then hair combined with water and uh, using hair, the movement to create a connection or relationship between two people. It can be male or female or, ca or can be same uh, gender. And this is my show um, two years ago at Hall Contemporary Gallery in Kansas City. Uh, mixed media of charcoal drawing with uh, straw bells representing the openness of Kansas landscape. Also tried with different uh, medium, uh, site-specific outdoor pieces. This is my response to the uh, current uh, urban development in China uh, using telephone wires to address um, the overwhelming aspect of urban development. Uh, this is my next project I'm going to have at San Francisco Ch Culture Center. It's inspiration from visiting the redwoods in California. So I create uh, 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 three, four rows of long uh, hanging 
growth of hair, but looks like a forest. So when you walk in, the, the, the visitors are invited to interact with the, the work. Because in the past, we're all two-dimensional work. This is first time um, stand, standing out, move out at a three-dimensional form. And uh, the public can walk on the piece, or even can touch on the piece, or even can destroy the piece. So it's, it's a, a, a social experiment or engagement with the public. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.